So, do we have the anxious audience back in the room? I think we do. I just stopped seeing you. It's a very rock star lighting here, but I won't go into my John Bon Jovi imitation mode. It would be unlistenable anyway. Um, it's been a dance day, and now we have a dance closing panel, uh, which we are going to have. So, we're going to hear uh, first the uh, greetings of, from uh, Commissioner Maria Gabriel, then uh, results from the pre parallel sessions. And I say now, at this stage, to the uh, chairs of the parallel sessions, that you have exactly one minute per one hour of your session. So you have two minutes each, because it's eight sessions, and we need to squeeze you in about 15 minutes. So. With that level of density, it means you can't exhaust your two-hour session in two minutes. You just have to take out two key messages you'll deliver in a, a sharp way to the audience. And I will chase you out uh, of the stage if you don't do that. Sorry about it. Uh, I will ask all the paralysis on leads here at the same time, so you form a nice line here and uh, a nice sense of community. and then. We go from there, and then we'll hear reflections to the parallels in conversation with Silke Obst uh, from Vila uh, Tabulic cabinet uh, linked to DG Move, and uh, then Meji Rowan from uh, head of unit from DG Connect, and we close with the city, uh, as of course fittingly for the day, uh, Vice Mayor from the city of Eindhoven, Mary Ann Shores, will close the day, and of course, well, before Martin who will close the loop, but you're not a, not a speaker, you are kind of uh, part of the furniture anyway. So, uh, I think that is the worst kind of joke. I can stop the, uh, my opening uh, session, uh, uh, start here with, so I'll uh, shut up, but the, uh, and we'll switch to the video, so we couldn't get uh, Maria Gabriel here in, in person, but nowadays with the, uh, uh, remote uh, presence, uh, we have the next best, best thing, which is the uh, video uh, greeting from, uh, from the Commissioner. Mesdames et Messieurs, c'est avec plaisir que j'ouvre l'édition 2018 de la conférence Connected Smart Cities aux côtés des autres orateurs distingués de cette session. Il y a à peine 11 ans, pour la première fois dans l'histoire, les villes sont devenues le principal lieu de vie pour la moitié de la population mondiale. Cette urbanisation accélérée se produit parallèlement au changement climatique et à un flot d'innovation numérique, big data, intelligence artificielle, robotique et Internet des objets. Ces dernières transforment les interactions humaines, y compris la manière dont nous travaillons, gouvernons et interagissons. Nous arrivons au point où les villes doivent devenir intelligentes dans l'intérêt de leurs citoyens. Ainsi, Nous devons mettre en avant des meilleurs moyens de gérer l'énergie, les transports, l'eau et les déchets, ainsi que le transfert de données au profit de tous les citoyens. Nous comptons sur vous aujourd'hui pour partager vos idées novatrices et pour nous aider à construire un marché unique numérique durable centré sur les citoyens. De nombreuses initiatives de villes intelligentes voient le jour et de nombreuses villes de l'Union européenne ont pris la voie de la transformation intelligente. Ces initiatives méritent d'être partagées pour ainsi voir le nombre de villes intelligentes augmenter en Europe. En ce sens, le rôle des autorités locales et de l'industrie est crucial. Nous devons promouvoir la coopération étroite entre tous les acteurs concernés. Ce sont les citoyens, nous tous, qui en bénéficieront. C'est pourquoi mon message aujourd'hui est « Rejoignez-nous et partagez ». La Commission européenne soutient les approches collectives qui visent à assurer la coopération entre les acteurs privés et publics au niveau de l'Union en matière d'initiatives et politiques conjointes pour le développement des villes intelligentes. L'un des forums où ces approches communes se développent est le partenariat d'innovation européen pour les villes et les communautés intelligentes. Ainsi, par exemple, 100 villes et 88 partenaires industriels liés par une lettre d'intention, ont fourni une architecture de référence pour les plateformes urbaines. En outre, un guide de leadership et un cadre de gestion 
ont été produits en tant qu'instrument nécessaire à l'amélioration des administrations et des services urbains intersectoriels. Ces résultats ont été repris et adoptés par des organisations de standardisation majeures, telles que les instituts allemands et britanniques de standardisation, l'Organisation internationale de la standardisation et l'Union internationale des télécommunications. Ces dynamiques s'intègrent parfaitement au travail effectué dans le domaine de la gestion de l'énergie et de l'eau. En guise d'exemple, un partenariat de ville a travaillé sur le développement d'un langage commun pour les appareils intelligents. Au niveau européen, l'Institut européen des standards européens a mis en place en 2017 deux groupes de spécification de l'industrie, l'un sur la gestion de la formation, l'autre sur le profil numérique de la ville. Ce travail est concret et conduira à des changements dans la façon dont les citoyens vivent leur ville. C'est vous qui accomplissez cet important travail et nous comptons sur vous pour le mener toujours plus loin. Un autre volet de l'aide de l'Union à la modernisation de nos villes est le financement de l'innovation, disponible via le programme Horizon 2020 et les fonds régionaux et structurels, ces dernières faisant partie de l'agenda urbain pour l'Union. Dans le cadre du programme Horizon 2020, l'Union rassemble directement les villes qui travaillent en matière d'innovation technologique, d'interopérabilité et de normes qui jettent les bases d'un marché européen des villes intelligentes. C'est d'ailleurs l'objectif des projets phares qui incluent trois villes leaders et au minimum trois autres villes dans le but explicite de soutenir la coopération, le développement conjoint et la reproduction des solutions et des approches réussies. L'agenda urbain pour l'Union européenne offre aux villes l'opportunité d'échanger et profiter de leurs expériences respectives. Permettez-moi de souligner l'une de ces initiatives, le Digital Transition Partnership qui a démarré en 2017 sous la direction de Sofia, Tallinn et Oulu. Nous avons de grandes attentes. Enfin, le plan INCAR, qui permet d'octroyer des prêts à de grands projets aux risques élevés via la Banque européenne d'investissement, est une source de financement cruciale. Par ailleurs, la Commission et la Banque européenne d'investissement étudient les possibilités de soutenir des projets Smart Cities par des plateformes d'investissement. Si vous n'êtes pas sûr de quelle est la meilleure source de financement pour vous et vos projets, n'hésitez pas à consulter l'outil de financement en ligne développé dans le cadre du partenariat d'innovation européen pour les villes et les communautés intelligentes. Permettez-moi maintenant de parler des solutions Smart Cities pilotées dans le cadre du projet Synchronicity via des projets à large échelle de Horizon 2020 et qui bénéficient de la coordination enthousiaste de nos hôtes. Synchronicity a pour objectif de relancer et d'élargir le marché des services urbains par l'Internet des objets sur base des besoins des villes et des communautés en partenariat avec l'industrie. Ce projet s'appuie sur des normes communes d'interopérabilité tout en tenant compte des défis tels que la cybersécurité et la protection de la vie privée. Nous devons toutefois garder à l'esprit que les temps pour passer des projets pilotes aux applications générales et d'intensifier nos activités est arrivé. Cela nécessite l'attraction d'investissements bien au-delà de ce que le budget public seul peut fournir. Nous attendons donc avec impatience les points de vue des représentants de l'industrie et des institutions de financement sur les facteurs critiques de succès des investissements municipaux et sur leur association aux mécanismes de financement nationaux et européens. Il est crucial que nous développions ensemble un modèle d'investissement solide au service de nos villes et de nos citoyens. Je voudrais terminer par un mot sur la nécessité de la participation pleine des citoyens dans ces avancées technologiques et sociales. Selon une récente enquête Eurobaromètre, 75% des Européens pensent que la numérisation a un effet positif sur l'économie. Mais 74% pensent que la numérisation remplace plus d'emplois qu'elle n'en crée. Ainsi, nous devons faire de nos citoyens des partenaires actifs et égaux dans la transformation numérique des villes. Je voudrais mettre en avant dans ce contexte le manifeste sur l'engagement des citoyens que le partenariat européen d'innovation a élaboré. Je pense que cela correspond bien à l'appel des maires de Rossitis à repenser notre façon de faire en Europe. 
Le chemin est ouvert, mais le chemin à parcourir est important. Nous comptons sur vous tous pour travailler ensemble avec nous pour que les villes intelligentes soient une réalité quotidienne pour les citoyens européens. Vous pouvez compter entièrement sur notre engagement. Je vous souhaite à tous des discussions riches et un événement couronné de succès. Je vous remercie. Great. Uh, message is possible pretty densely packed stuff, so good overview of different initiatives going on. Now uh, I will start to call out the names of the parallel sessions. That's another dense package we had today. So there are eight sessions, and uh, please, uh, I'll uh, ask you on stage uh, at the order of, uh, of your addresses, because we need to make a small change to the chronological order, since some people need to leave. So number one, uh, ask the data protection people, Sebastian Ziegler and Hananimi Hukertz on stage. Uh, then uh, Ecosystem Innovation, Susanna Body and Alan Herer from uh, Enola Creative Ring, respectively. Uh, IoT enabled smart cities market creation, Gemma Guerra and Davor Mersman, either together or either of you. Energy into across smart homes, Keith Dickerson from uh, Etsy. Uh, number five, yes, tech track platforms for IoT, car people of TM Forum. Carl said that you can do it very good, you know all about the topic, very good. Uh, smart mobility, Seppo Hataja and Pia Karjalainen from uh, uh, OASC Mobility Workgroup, Tampere and Ertiko. Natural Resources, Andrea Rubini and Jürgen Sturm. And last but not least, standards unifying everything global standards, which is uh, Nikolaus Kontanikis and Martin. I, I you uh, also joining us here, and that's it. So uh, I'll step aside. You can use the podium unless you want to use the hat mic, whatever, whatever you prefer. And uh, as said, sorry about it. It should be to meet you see the number of people, so it's quite a few. So just, you know, few key takeaways from the session, and we certainly are going to share the rest with the group anyway uh, in the frame of open innovation. So first, uh, Hanna and Sebastian. Yeah, hi, everybody. So we had a session on how to secure uh, privacy and take care of the GDPR requirements while enabling innovation. I think uh, through uh, Sebastian's introduction to the topic and the tools he presented that have been created in the Synchronism pro Project are really something that you should be checking out later if the topic is new to you. Uh, after that I introduced a bit on the needs that cities like Helsinki might have on this topic and we are really encouraging the industry to go beyond just complying to the uh, requirements of GDPR and trying to use this as a kind of uh, kick on our butts to create an ecosystem where data can be more easily shared and monetized and compensated. Uh, we had a workshop uh, part where myself, we were workshopping or putting on the citizen hat for a change instead of the professional one and kind of in the, looking into the willingness of, of sharing data and there was a really strong uh, interest in sharing data with cities. So cities take, take that uh, advantage of that. Uh, as well as with research uh, organizations. For companies, also good news, uh, we are willing to share data, but uh, some monetary compensation must come with that. And there is a need for transparent uh, way of handling the concept management so that we know where our data is being used and by whom and for what. And Sebastian. Yes, <clears throat> thank you. As uh, mentioned by Hannah, first of all, good evening, everybody. We had a very interactive session, very interesting. We had three different groups. And so you have 30 second seconds. Hmm? You have 30 seconds. 30 seconds, second group on risk management, several elements which were highlighted, the need to balance the expertise between law and ICT, cyber security, uh, which means to be really enforced, new tools to be developed and adopted, and some of them were presented from synchronicity, like the DP, DPIA for smart cities, the role of controllers and co-controlling between municipality 
uh, regional level, national level, who is responsible, who is liable, there are some issues to be addressed. I switch directly to innovation and end user engagement in the, the innovations. Uh, some elements which have been foreseen in terms of research topic for the future for data protection and smart cities is to use GDPR as a source of innovation, which is very important. The issue of consent, how to get consent in smart cities from citizens, that's something important. The issue of small organizations which may be marginalized because they are afraid of the GDPR penalties. Sorry, Sebastian, Control mechanisms to, start to... societal dimension. Very good. Thank you. Well done. You don't have to try to exhaust the whole of your panel. Just keep that in mind because otherwise it's hard to grasp what you're saying. Uh, so, uh, Susanna and Alan, next uh, session. So, with Alan, uh, we similarly uh, chaired a very inter interactive session um, innovation ecosystems, joining uh, excellence and capacity building. Uh, we had a very diverse and nice balance being having cities networks, bottom-up initiatives, startups uh, present in the room. I stick to my one minute, uh, three messages that I take away from the, uh, from the session. One was sharing is caring, that uh, we have to really uh, have a common database of uh, knowledge, materials, and best practices, and make sure that we bridge the innovation gap within different regions uh, and, and countries in Europe. Second one was not only to think about smart cities, but smart societies. So we had the example on the various needs in smaller town, towns and villages, not just to think about the urban level. And last but not least, uh, citizens were brought up several times as the driving force of the digitalization process and the digital single market. Ellen. What to add when a smart woman is talking before you? It's not easy, but uh, people were wondering about the role of the different networks that are present uh, in our room, but also here today. And we were underlining that as a city, I think uh, you need accessible, standardized and open data. And that's where uh, uh, OASC is fighting every day for in uh, connecting the cities. You need places where you can test, having tools, having places where you can uh, experiment, and also a methodology. That's where NL and the Living Labs can help. I think uh, a network like EuroCities is about leadership. You need leaders at political level, but also at corporate level, to support what we do. And the Creative Ring will try to connect you with, uh, with uh, the creative ecosystem by, uh, composed by the multiple helix. Uh, so people coming from several uh, areas and backgrounds, but we try to engage them uh, within the experimentation, building uh, the smarter society. So that's it. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. That's four seconds short. <laughs> And for, for Gemma and Davor. Yeah, so we also had a very interactive session, lots of questions to be follow up. And the idea of this session was a little bit to trans how to translate the smart city ambitions into, into market creation and, and some concrete actions. What do we do? What are the instruments like open calls or living labs? Not so much uh, the methodology, but actually how can they open the commercialization path for it? So we had a uh, lot of interesting presentations on. Uh, on, uh, for instance, the uh, digital uh, city challenge of how to upskill cities. We had living labs as an example of how to showcase technology and how can they overcome some of the contracts with several stakeholders and showcase to the rest of the, of the society how this technology works. We had also open calls as an instrument, pre-procurement, and also the international view from our Seoul representative of how they use think tanks and incubation in their society. Yeah, and um, I think out of the, the panel discussion and, and the questions with the audience, which was quite active and, and I think uh, very inspiring, um, it was, you know, came uh, maybe a topic that we could all work on, uh, um, in a sense, is the nature of the entities versus the natures of these instruments. Eh? So how to, uh, for example, in the case of organicity, where experimentation was made extremely accessible and, you know, um, uh, created a pull effect, you know, how you could do this with, for example, pre-commercial procurement, which was a bit more challenging if you look to projects like Select for Cities and so forth. So I think, uh, you know, the engagement of these start kind of startup incubators where some of the financing can be and, uh, and the instruments, you know, coming from different angles, that that could be a, uh, maybe a topic to think about. Very good, thank you. 
Smart homes, so uh, Keith Dickerson, interoperability <coughs> for smart homes, how does it work? Smart Energy Session 3, uh, we had four different but very interesting presentations, but the same issues kept coming up. One was how to integrate a greater proportion of renewables into the grid, especially uh, distributed microgeneration from homes and buildings within a smart city. Uh, secondly, the ability to implement real consumer-driven demand response mechanisms. Uh, pilots have been done, but there's no wide-scale deployment of these techniques, and there's unlikely to be until we get the interoperability end-to-end -end from the end device to the generator through the smart meter. And there's a question of who benefits from that. And thirdly, the flexibility for the smaller players in the energy market to come into the market in the presence of the larger players which um, are dominating at the moment. And we feel that um, new offerings for energy supply could be made in the market if the smaller players could come in. But regulation, or rather deregulation, is required to allow this and to remove the barriers. So that's largely a regulatory problem. Very good, thank you. Platforms for IoT and smart cities, and uh, instead of car, uh, we have uh, Boris von yeah. Oetermann. Hello. Um, yeah, so I was uh, in the uh, snappily named platforms for IoT and smart cities communities towards next generation internet um, thing. Carl had to leave. Um, so here are some things that I caught up as uh, red threads. Uh, first of all, it was a technology session, but technology didn't seem to be the leading thread in there. Um, technology development is moving towards distributed and edge, um, and that was like the main thing that I that I learned about the technology. A lot of it was clear that there's a role for both open and proprietary uh, in in this field, um, and that open APIs can be a bridging factor uh, between those. But that process and and a change in process is starting to become an enabling factor in that development. Um, but that it's impossible to develop anything at this point in the IoT world and the smart cities world without collaborating. Uh, the, the power of the technology and the platforms is increasing and as is the power of cities. So now is the time for us to be very responsible with that. Very good, thank you. <laughs> and moving on to smart mobility, mobility as a service, Seppo Haataja and Pia Karjalainen. Thanks. This is going to be a matter of political speech. So we had the mobility session. I think it was the best session this whole conference. <laughs> oh, 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 this auditorium audience. And surprise, surprise. I think the main, main there was actually seven good presentations. And of course, the uh, material will be distributed to all of you later on. But a uh, few things. One, maybe quite self-clear is that how we involve the city is doing things together, not just uh, independently in various projects, but something together in the same way, common way. So we need transfer, transfer ability, scalability, and harmonization. Those are quite clear, but uh, it was also a strong message from our discussion in, in the panel. And so it, there is a lot of challenges in mobility area, but also huge amount of opportunities. And finally, the last outcome was that there's a clear need for this OSC mobility working group, so we start to be active. Uh, I don't actually have too much to add to my, what uh, Seppo just said. I just want to thank you for excellent summary and great gesture on that. Thank you. Thank you. 120. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, natural resources, digital border, and beyond. Andrea Rubini and Jurgen Sturm. Andrea obviously isn't there unless you are Andrea. Oh, sorry, you are Andrea. Sorry. Damn it, you were behind, behind his back. <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Digital water and beyond. Uh, we were the ones who put up the flip charts because we asked four questions to the to the particip participants of the of the workshop. The first one was where do we stand? And actually, we stand at the beginning of digitizing water into the water infrastructure. 
and digitizing infrastructure, which in many cities is more than 100 years old, puts us in front of specific challenges which we, which we need to address very sensitively. The second question was, why digitizing water infrastructure? Because the water comes out of the tap already today. But um, of course there are very positive implications on saving energy, on uh, improving quality, improving uh, quantity uh, management. However, we have to see that these additions, this added value for sustainable water infrastructure comes at a price. And we have to be sensitive in water pricing because digitization of water here, water infrastructure must never result in less access for vulnerable citizens to, to water. So, so far, um, you have to balance the economic asset on the one hand and the right to water on the other hand. Third question was how to digitalize? And uh, we felt that it was important to have a combination of top-down and bottom-up system, effective planning, keeping into account the principle that water is a right. Then, last but not least, uh, digitalization points also to security. And, well, uh, water infrastructures are already critical infrastructures. By digitalizing them, it means that we might expose them to additional risk may made on natural disasters. So, um, then in the end, the session was, the, the feeling was that there is, there is the need for, uh, in this digital transition, uh, for digital water, natural resources like digital water, water, to have a good combination between innovation, technology, and good and effective governance. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> That's exactly two, and uh, we close with standards. Standards in two minutes <laughs> uh, by by uh, Nikolaus Kontinakis uh, from Eurocities. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. It feels lovely. So, uh, eight speakers in one room, uh, process-wise, one lesson learned, uh, it was European Commission, large uh, standardization organizations, some very important projects. So, one lesson learned from the process, keep putting the same people in the one room, and sooner or later they will understand what are the overlaps, what they can do together, how they can create opportunities, and be more efficient and quick. So, and nobody felt harassed in maximum two months, they promised to meet again. So uh, now, in terms of content, two things that I think were coming again and again uh, in, in the discussion. One is, of course, we have tens of thousands of standards related to smart cities. So one question is, if we're talking about smart cities and cities as a final user, how do we help cities to identify these points, critical, pivotal points, critical, important interfaces, interfaces, name it as you want, and help cities identify where which are these standards that they have really to, to, to follow or understand if they want to, to move forward. And second one, it's this discussion about semantic interoperability and vocabularies, it's nice, geeky, uh, it sounds very complex. Uh, which also, with a touch of humor, it's a, I think it's an irony of history that even if we try to hide behind terabytes of data, if we don't learn to understand each other, we won't make this data useful. Very good, thank you. So, and then I will ask uh, the next speaker to uh, do an impossible task. <laughs> so, to basically uh, reflect back to the uh, to the uh, parallel group reports, which is shot just heard, and it was so handful. So, uh, welcome on stage, Hilke Obst from the uh, cabinet member from the uh, cabinet of uh, Commission of Violeta Brut and DG Move. Uh, so mobility area expert, but also other areas which uh, the uh, commissioner uh, cabinet covers. Uh, I leave you, give you the podium, and uh, use rock and roll mic myself because I like that. Uh, and maybe we have a kind of a dialogical process. So did you see a red red line? Oh, red. Sorry, not red line. That's a Brexit term. Red thread uh, across the uh, different uh, groups. Um, yes. I see one really extremely positive red thread across everything and one big question as well, if I can say that as well, um, because I mean as a policy maker, as a regulator and as the one that gives a lot of public funding to what you're all working on, we know that unfortunately public funding is fine. 
at the European level as much as at local level. And um, I think you're all reading now um, about the budget discussions that are ongoing at European level. And it is a bit of an unknown when we will have in the next funding period. So it is very important that we leverage the funding, the public funding, as much as we can, and that we get other partners on board, private partners on board, and that we get companies interesting, interested in all the smart city projects that you are working on. And for that, sharing and replication is so important. And so this is what I take away. The first thing that I really take away from, uh, from you today, how much we, the regulators and you, the cities, are aligned on that. Because this is, I understand, this is exactly what you do, and this is exactly what we try to do in the way that we shape our instruments. I mean, some of it was already mentioned in Commissioner Gabriel's opening speech, uh, speech the European Innovation Partnership brings together public um, operators and, and, and private companies, um, more than 5,000 participants. That's exactly the same model. Or um, I don't know whether you know that the European um, uh, Institute for Technology is about to launch a call for a new knowledge community on urban mobility tomorrow. It's very timely, actually. Uh, so some finally. of you, finally, yeah, some of you might be interested in that. We, they have an event, I think, on the 13th of February in Brussels, where my colleagues from DG Move will be. So if you're interested, just, just go. And it's the same idea in this knowledge community, community bringing together public and private stakeholders and getting the, 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 the private stakeholders interested as well. But that can only work if you make the solutions scalable and replicable. Um, legally and technically, I understand this is exactly what you were working on, this is exactly what, what you want. Um, and this is how we designed, we tried to design the Lighthouse uh, project, the idea of having, as Commissioner said as well, to have some Lighthouse cities that go ahead and then follow our cities. So really to leverage on the solutions that we create, that we find, so to make it interesting for private investors as well. So that's a very positive red thread that I see and take away today. But then I take away a huge question mark uh, which is on data. Once that's down. It's not down, but it's it's oh, really... Yeah, just as a challenge to... Regulators. It's really a challenge, I think, to us regulators to explain better and to you to make it happen on the ground. But, I mean, I, I attended part of the session on, on data and just thought, like, wow, I mean, how can we make sure that those who collect the data are not discouraged from collecting the data they need? But if they are, this is against innovation. How can we make sure that it is clear who is responsible once the data has been collected? How can we make sure that we grant access to data in such a way that innovation isn't stifled? Um, because once the poor data controller has collected the data, the uh, temptation is to say, oh, if I have to grant access to somebody else, I'd rather not do it because this is really uncertain under GDPR. We don't want this because we want innovation for citizens. We want innovative services. And then deriving from that, that this is my competition background maybe, how can we make sure that platforms or intermediaries, for instance, like the car industry, don't play the role of a gate of substituting themselves for the data subjects, who are the ones that should actually decide who has access to their data in order to provide services. So here I don't have a solution, and that's why I said this is really a huge to-do list that I take away from the session today. Um, one more uh, on the question. Uh, as the, uh, when we think about the uh, open and child smart cities uh, network as a network of cities, and then this, this, this kind of event is even beyond that because we have the European <coughs> research community as well as corporations here and we gather lots of rich information from these stakeholders. So which kind of ways would you expect us to have a dialogue uh, with the, uh, with the uh, policymakers in order to, to proceed, for example, in the uh, formulating, the, let's say, data landscape uh, in, in these kind of events or, or other, other yes. forms? Yes, I mean, ideally, um, 
I think we should we should have an event only on data, and we should, in order to have a really interesting and maybe controversial debate, we should really invite one, maybe we, maybe the Commission should do it, invite citizens, invite cities, invite innovative service providers, startups, but also established companies, invite the insurance companies, because they're one of the examples for stakeholders that really need access to data, car rental companies, car manufacturers, well, now, sorry, I'm talking about mobility, but the same I, the same thing is true, I guess, for water and energy. Anything smart, anything smart city always involves data. It's not possible without data. And we just let them talk. I think we need to take some really important decisions, and I don't think we have the elements today to decide how we, how we actually go about it and how we can provide clarity. Thanks, Amelia. Thank you. Uh, there will be much more we could cover, well, but uh, let's continue with the data because it's a sort of toolbox approach to data to provide people with tools to manage it instead of only legislation or regulation. I think that's a very sort of important part of it, which is far from being developed at the moment. Smart contracting and the uh, rest of those tools. Absolutely. Very good. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. And, uh, we continue with the European Commission, so a uh, very important uh, stakeholder uh, which is involved in uh, lots of initiatives uh, which are present in the room is the uh, uh, IoT unit of, of the DJ DJ Connect, and uh, we are glad to have there from the IoT unit uh, with us Mathieu Rowan, the head of IoT unit, who also gave a very impressive uh, improvised talk yesterday at the dinner, I have to say. It sounded like prepared, but you claimed it wasn't. So we <laughs> wait for much for today. Thank you. Thank you very much for the for the nice introduction. Uh, indeed, yesterday at the at the mayor's dinner, I was I was uh, let me say made a little bit of a victim as being asked to give a speech, and I did it, and it was unprepared. And then I thought, but probably today I come better a bit more prepared so that I do not repeat myself what I, what I said yesterday to many of you who were attending that dinner. So thanks a lot for, for inviting me to, to this event and uh, to the organizers and for, for getting involved in, in this closing session. I'm, I'm very happy about what I heard as the feedback coming from the, from the working groups which have taken place during the course of today uh, because they the feedback touched on many of the issues uh, we are dealing with in my Internet of Things IoT unit, and many of you know this unit uh, because we are funding and provide financial support for um, projects in that area, and among others of which are also the big smart cities uh, projects. Um, I would like to follow up in my closing session here, a bit on what Commissioner Gabriel emphasized in her video speech, and that is the need for joining and sharing. That means uh, to make digital transition of more and more cities uh, a success. It's not that much a technological question, it's, it's, a, it's a question of joining and sharing. And, uh, I attended part of the meeting of the mobility session this afternoon and at the very end there was a question, what should cities do in order to make uh, smart mobility happy, happening? And the answer from the panelists was, in many cases, collaborating, sharing, joining up uh, with other ongoing initiatives to learn from each other in order to improve uh, together. So uh, this digital transition indeed can can only happen if, if local authorities, regional authorities, and also national and European, but also industries uh, cooperate and work closer together for the, for the mutual benefit of those involved, but in particular for the benefit uh, of, the, of the citizens. You know that there are many smart cities initiatives ongoing at all these different levels, um, but we see also that these initiatives need to be better joined up. Many cities do things in isolation, and many cities repeat just the same mistakes, 
uh, has done in other cities. So how, how to organize this joining up and the collaboration uh, better and how to exploit the full potential of available opportunities is here the question. I, and I come back later a bit to that to, to tell or to give you my view how we at European level can, can help in that and sometimes also with a bit of financial support. Um, I'm very delighted uh, to see that today this event has a great spirit of joining and sharing because this is cutting across the sessions I have seen, not all but, but a few, um, that cuts across the, the morning session of, of, of today uh, of the, where the key networks involved in smart cities uh, were giving their messages but also on the key, in their workshops on the, on the key topics of, the, of this afternoon. So the importance of joining and sharing applies and holds also for us at the EU level. So I'm not here preaching you and say you need to do, but we do nothing. Um, for instance, in, in my unit, in the IoT unit, um, we have a number of key large-scale projects funded under the Horizon 2020 program. Uh, and I refer in particular to a, a set of five so-called large-scale pilots who in total receive some 100 million funding. So that is some critical mass we put into, into this. Um, you know one of these projects best, which is Synchronicity, uh, which is explicitly focusing on smart cities, but also the work of the other large-scale pilots is relevant and highly important for the smart cities. Uh, this is in areas of agriculture, of, of wearables, of smart health uh, and connected cars. They all have commonalities and share common problems and issues. And, and what uh, the finding in a smart cities project is, is also relevant for connected cars and what is in smart health relevant is also for smart cities and so on. So, um, they share issues around interoperability, about standardization, uh, about security, but also legal issues, uh, data protection, privacy, liability. All of this is, is an issue in all of these different areas and, and there is a sharing and, and joining um, necessary in order to, for the mutual benefit. Um, this importance of joining and sharing holds also for projects managed in other parts uh, of the Commission. My Commissioner mentioned a few of them, Silke mentioned also a few of them, so as I'm most familiar with projects in my own unit around IoT in that area, I focus on them now, but, but there are many others, uh, and I cannot enumerate all of them, but, but uh, this, this encouragement to join and share applies for the whole set of, of, of these projects we are, we are funding. I'm convinced that these large projects and the clusters can really highly benefit from joining the forces in, in, in these selected areas and make a, an amplified European-wide and, and global impact. And I said this requires also us in the Commission to do the same, uh, not only asking our projects to do that, so, um, and we do that. For example, uh, in my unit, unit is always in close cooperation with other services in the Commission, uh, to run the different projects. Um, those of you who are directly involved in the one or the other know that indeed my unit is co-managing these projects with colleagues from DV Agriculture, with colleagues from DG uh, Move probably, no we have not yet a common one, Silke, but that I think will come, uh, with, with colleagues in DG Energy and so on. This is, let me say, not taken for granted going up the history of Commission Administrative Services, but we, we do not preach, only we practice what, what we preach. And, uh, and for that reason, I want you to know it, also that, that these close contacts um, um, also provide synergies for you and also for the funding programs. Joining and sharing is not limited only to cooperation among projects, but also to the cooperation between existing networks. Uh, whose voices you are have you have heard today in the in the morning session in particular. So depending on your perspective, you may wish to choose, for instance, the Alliance of Internet of Things Innovators um, on the industry side, the so-called AIOTI, or the network in the global open and agile smart cities environment, but also 
Eurocities and the Committee of the Regions uh, are excellent opportunities for joining and sharing. And do not concentrate only on one. Reach out to all of them. There is in something for each of you. Um, as the theme of today's conference uh, highlights, we look forward to seeing cities driving the digital transformation and uh, successful front-runner cities where we will experience future first can really combine early best practices with their citizens and growth and jobs created by their innovative uh, systems. Um, for, for this drive, uh, we at EU level offer opportunities for financial support for you. I agree with Silke, this cannot be done forever and will not be done forever. But we watch out and see where, with some limited support, we can achieve a leverage effect. And, and we do this through our funding programs also in, uh, in the near future. So if you, are, if you aim at joining one or, or more of the winning European project proposals, you will no doubt have many potential work program topics to uh, explore depending on your needs and, and strength. From the perspective of, of my unit, um, the Internet of Things, the Horizon 2020 uh, topics in the work program of 2018 offer some opportunities with potential relevance to smart cities. There is a small call which asks for a coordination and support action only relevant for very few uh, organizations, but there will be a, there is a call with a deadline in November this year, you may know with, with three potentially smart cities related topics. One is related to smart and healthy living at home. Uh, another one is related to interoperable and smart homes and grids. I think this was presented um, more in more detail in the energy session today. And then there is another one on digital platforms, uh, pilots, horizontal activities for three different coordination and support actions. So, uh, further, the Internet of Things as we develop it now is also a key element both in the next generation Internet as well as in the digitizing European industry strategies and, and initiatives. And for, for the longer term, the planning, and I also refer to the next uh, multi-annual financial framework beyond 2020, um, we are bringing in our input and hope you do that from your side via the channels you have to ensure that we probably can have continued funding uh, also from there. Not in order to fund yet another 10 smart other cities projects, but in order to find the, the funding needed to, to achieve the leverage effect. To conclude, this, the, the global championing, as we call it, for a human-centric approach to IoT policy is a significant European opportunity, and this is very much related to smart cities, as the cities and the citizens should contribute to this approach, for example, through the large-scale piloting, and key policy elements, as I mentioned then, uh, earlier, include privacy, liability issues, and cybersecurity. I will not comment on these now in more detail, but, but my unit is not only looking into the technical issues into the experimentation and piloting issues, we look also into related policy issues which come together with these emerging technology, not in isolation for IoT only, but also in relation and connected to artificial intelligence, 3D printing, uh, blockchain technologies and so on. They raise legal questions where we now ask the question to which extent in our current legislation still fit for purpose uh, to deal with that, and we do that with colleagues in other DGs who, who are working on the policy issues as, as well. So you see there are many opportunities to join and share, and there's a lot of work ahead of us uh, and for, you to, for, uh, for the smart cities. Um, for that reason, I, I really want to encourage you to continue working together, Europe-wide and globally, and looking for the win-win for all involved. I have one of my staff members who likes quoting win-win situations. And in, in this, 
and everybody knows him probably. Uh, in this situation, I like it very much, so let's together create win-win situations. Let's together be strong and please join up with the like-minded uh, cities who have similar challenges. Please share across ecosystems of cities and communities, also with small and large companies, academia and innovation facilitators, uh, and let's uh, experiment and co-create together with citizens. So for doing so, I hope that many of you will also have in your calendars the IoT Week in Bilbao in June this year. We will be there, especially uh, for the Smart Cities uh, track. Depending on your connected Smart Cities perspective, there will naturally be also many other fruitful opportunities for joining and sharing at that event. And I, I wish you all the best and all success for the creation of this human-centric IoT and IoT smart cities. Thank you. Thanks. A million, that was a, a great closing, or almost closing. For the conference, the uh, sharing has been mentioned a lot here during today. The uh, social issue is not dead. Um, then we actually do know, on the other hand, that, that cities tend to be siloed organizations, and uh, sometimes sharing is not caring, it needs to be that sharing is scary. Uh, and I think the, uh, that's the, maybe the main motivation behind the uh, Open and Smart Cities is to, because we have recognized that how sharing happens is not by deciding, but by doing. It's a side product of doing things together that people learn to trust and then these networks start to start to work. You can talk about the principles all you like, but that actually doesn't do anything. And that's what we want to do in these projects who are also present in the room. And I think the, uh, that's the uh, fuel of the uh, OASC network. So uh, on that uh, vein, I ask back on stage Martin Bruskov to close Sorry, am I forgetting something? Oh, damn it, I am. Horrible. I decided to leave my notes there because I thought we are back to the last speaker and we weren't yet. I really apologize, Maria. Maria. So, of course. But, uh, yes. And especially since I know you well. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, I didn't blunder for the whole day except now, so it's about time. You can take the mic. Maria Shores, see the mic over. Hello, everybody. He was afraid that I would ask him to sing. <laughs> Actually, probably you, Dan, he says, you didn't realize it, but you were at a cultural venue. We are cultural beings. We create our world. We can always make a difference. And the first thing we do when there's something new, when there is a new instrument, is that we play with it to create new things. And this event was a real happy start of the new year. It made me feel exhilarated. I thought, yes, we can do it. For you saw that the instrument was investigated. The IT was investigated in all different kinds of ways. But the aim is to create the lives that we really want to live. In cities in which we really want to live. In a society that we really want to be a part of. But you may ask the question, the commission says, well, the path is there. But will we really be able to create that bright new future? Not if we do not get our act together. The Chinese are buying up our companies. A few years back, I visited Huawei in Shenzhen, and they are awesome, what they are able to do. 
they showed me their data collectors and that they would able to do that for the next 10 years using the same machine. What is? And they also showed me what they were doing it in a few Arabic cities. And it was about control. It was about safety. It was about 1984. That is what Chinese companies will give us. So we look at the other side. The five California companies that have brought us so much because we are all using our smartphones. And we are forgetting all the time that really we are hooked to the instrument. And it's a tremendous achievement, but it's brave new world. It's the SOMA. We really want to use it, but what it's used for is for making us optimized consumers. And as soon as you have no money, you're of no interest. And they made such a pile of money, an obnoxious amount of money, that they are able to take over mobility. That's what they start with. Care is the second. And Google is now building whole new cities. That is what we are facing. The real question is, do we have enough time to create our own solutions? And the wonderful part of the urban agenda of the European Commission is that it's exactly about creating the solutions that befit our ways of life, our choice of life. And especially the digital transformation agenda is crucial in that. In that it is stated that on a European level, we really have to create technological solutions. We really need the technology in Europe to be able to use it in a fashion that allows you to create localized solutions all over Europe. So in the digital transformation agenda is stated, yes, generic technology, but specific solutions using design. And that's crucial for within the European framework. We are very diverse. And in a way, that is what should be celebrated. People being able to create their own cultural solutions that befit their country, their city. It's us that technology should wipe everything away and that you have to start from a clean slate. So that's it, the agenda. But will it run? That's the real question. And it won't run unless we take care that we really structurize our approach. And the second thing is, we need a different governance to go with it. The first part is, we are doing tremendous things all over Europe. And everything is part of a call, and a second call, and a second, a third call. But how will we bring that together? And since the Euro European Commission have given cities now a say within Europe, within the EuroCities network, we have decided to create the lab of EuroCities. A seven-year program, well, things run for seven years within the European Commission, so, in which we will take care that solutions will be created within cities that are very good at creating that type of solutions, but also the upscaling will take place at the same time, but also ensure that it really will be upscaled 
all over Europe, using design so that you can get the localized results. And it works because, well, your cities, Eindhoven and your cities, are in the digital transformation agenda, and be, and I'm also chair of the Knowledge Society Forum of your cities, so we can put all the cities involved in and bring it back to the level of really creating things. Solutions. But we are also part, and a lot of our cities are part of OASC and of ENO and of uh, uh, all different kind of networks. And it's really now an open invitation. The lab of Euro cities is called Lab of Euro cities because we really want to create that lab. But we really want to create something for all of us in which we can really go for program meaning for the next seven years to be able to achieve an alternative for being taken over. In my own city, I have the same problem. My organization is a bureaucracy. The technical university is a bureaucracy. So we, for years we had a covenant to work together, but it didn't fly. So we created, we are creating an urban development institute outside our own organizations to be able to do things together. And we invite EMAC, that's the, the Belgian organization in research, and they are doing tremendous things in Antwerp, to be the pusher, to bring all the things together. For bringing things together is very difficult. And you only bring it together if you uh, go for what you really want to achieve. And that brings me to the second thing, governance. In the end, everything is connected to everything. So how will you be able to do something? Well, state a specific goal and look for the area which will be involved. And the governments that will be involved, local, regional, European, national, otherwise. And let them take care then of not creating solutions, but creating the process. And what you have to put up front. And that brings me to the question asked, how do you deal with data? And how do you deal with participation? The industry will not be a part of solutions unless you deal with procurements. Long year procurements. We do procurements for 15 years. That enables you to create a partnership. But the regulatory system is very strict in Eindhoven. It's based on open innovation, so no monopoly, no technology monopoly. Data are owned by us or by the citizens themselves but they are not owned by companies. And the most crucial thing, we want to see how the algorithms work. For the algorithms influence what we do. And then we asked the consortium to do it with all the stakeholders involved, foremost citizens. And yes, in different cities, you will create different solutions. It's always based on doing things together. We don't mistrust the companies. We don't only want them to be part of a society. And that brings me to my final part. In the end, it's not democracy about having the same opinion. Having different opinions is human, and it's something that we should celebrate. But it's about something else being a society. Being a society means that you have to take responsibility and you take responsibility in doing things together. And I don't care if you think that I'm wrong on every issue, but we have to do things together. Otherwise, there is no future. And I really believe, and that brings me back to happy days, we are able.
to create a future that works for people. Let's do it. Maybe I should. Great. And I will be exhausting my international speech for Martin. But Marianne, you're a tough act to follow, and indeed, uh, Mehtil and Silke as well. What a power team to have with the commissioner backing here. I think I can only say um, one thing, um, apart from thank you for coming. It's a real pleasure. Um, can we have lights in the room just to see how many are amazingly still here? Hello, good morning. Um, thank you for coming and uh, thank you for sharing uh, what you do, also sharing your concerns. I, I very much believe that, and you reflected that all three of you, that okay, lots of possibilities, but actually it's the concerns now. Who's liable? Okay, who owns it? And uh, how do we even make it, if that's how we can rephrase your last question? Okay, so we have a little work ahead of us uh, to do, and we'd be happy to, to join in. No, so, so my only um, point was actually to, to just um, tell for those who don't remember what the uh, logo of OAC um, embodies. So of course, first, yes, it's OASC, that's one reading, but there's another one. So you are never just yourself, you're always in a context, whether you're a city, in a region, in a country, in the world, blah, blah. You're never alone, okay? Bottom up, you have to have some things that come, that come from the ground, a concern of something that works. Yes, we need public and private. We need the bottom up and the top down at the same time, so this is the joining. And we need something new. So what I've seen here today is all of that. And I've seen a lot of uh, things I've heard before, but as you said, uh, uh, also Nikolaus, put people in the same room again and again and again, because otherwise if we have to start from scratch every time, we won't make it. <laughs> so I think that's a global ambition. And yes, uh, we are in fact different, um, but we need to find the minimal way at least to be able to talk to each other and understand each other. So. Uh, Let's try and give it another go at that. Um, and uh, with that, I close the conference and say thank you and uh, hopefully welcome again next year. Thank you. And, and an extra hand to Yamo. Thank you for moderating and for taking the time. Yes, thanks. Uh, and if I have another half also, thanks a lot. We are uh, way behind schedule, so I won't be making any speeches now. It's been a glorious day. Hope to see you in a year, or probably before that in the IOT week in Bilbao.